what's going on everybody my uh, 38 subscribers that I have this is the longest video I've made it's right now at about 19 minutes so I'm going to keep this intro very short but I just wanted to show uh, this new process that I went through and not new process I think the products been out there for a while but it's called tough coat I have a 1993 boat needs new carpet and I'm not a big fan of the carpet in the floor area and the way that it holds water. So I was looking at Sea Deck and a few alternatives, and this is the one that I landed on. So uh, watch this. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about it. I definitely am uh, learning how to use it and probably will use it again in the future. So this is Tough Coat. I ordered it from Amazon. So this is the actual Tough Coat, and this is Primer. And I have some pretty diesel directions. You hear thunder, and this is why I'm doing this today. It has been pouring down rain and thunder and lightning. I did take the kayak out this morning. I may make a video about that. Didn't catch any fish, so probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we have to mix these two together and then prime the area that we're going to go over. And then this is Tough Coat. It is a rubberized non skid coating. And like it says, it's ideal for boat decks, docks, marine services. And I bought this roller that comes with it. It's really textured. And my understanding is that the key to making this stuff work is prep. So we're gonna prep the area like crazy, get it as clean as we can. Also, also I've been told you have to mix it really well to get the rubbery stuff in here to kind of suspend and then put it in the tray. We've got a few up there and really make the rubbery, you know, coat come out of it. So we've got this right here, put this on the drill and we're gonna get stirring. We have to combine these two. So we're gonna put them into another paint can. Let's see how easy this first piece is. I took the screws out of the corners. <laughs> I think only this completely disintegrated and that's not exposed. It's inside this compartment, so that's not exposed to the sun. So this may go, may go easy. I don't know, I feel like I'm probably jinxing myself by saying that, but uh, you can see there's still quite a bit of glue. Ooh, I'm out of sand and dirt. The first thing I'm gonna do is shop back it. And the next thing we're gonna do is try to scrape it a little bit and then maybe sand it down. So one thing to consider is whether you want to try to put this stuff on the walls. This wall's got like a slope to it. And the carpet over there is actually in really good shape. So you can see I took a knife and I cut this carpet where I want it to uh, not stop. I want to clean that up a little bit, but just for the purposes of now getting this out of here, I think it'll work. <laughs> Quick thing to keep in mind, you notice I uh, shot back down in the drain hole. I want the hole or the bilge of the boat to stay clean. The reason for that is this drains directly down in there to your uh, bilge pumps and if junk gets in there, it will clog up your bilge pumps. And if you need them really bad, that'll be a really bad day if that happens. <laughs> sand down anything that I can to make it. I've got this part of here it's smooth now. I'm gonna keep working trying to smooth this out. It's, it's a, probably a sixteenth of an inch. You know, pretty good little dip there. So hopefully it won't be as noticeable once the, the flooring stuff is down. My wife pointed out there's almost like a little lip right there. And I'm okay with that as long as it's uniform. It looks like it belongs. But a little worried about the primer kind of like going up underneath there. She brought up maybe putting some caulk there. I'm a little worried, like, would it grab onto that caulk the way that it will the primer? So let's see what happens. Yeah, so as with the ups and downs of every project, I'm feeling a little uh, dejected right now about this. One of the reasons why, if you notice, there's like a lip that goes around. There's like some rough edges here. Just a second ago, I don't know what exactly this is. I'm pretty sure it's fiberglass. I dug in a little too deep over there with my... Uh, uh, scraper and I'm pretty sure it's saw some fiber so we don't want to do that part but you know I'm a little worried about how this stuff's going to cover some of this you know textures and lips and screws and stuff like that I feel like at this point I'm, I'm in like I've got to go for this so I'm hoping that either one it works great 
too. It works terrible enough that I can get it up easily and then put carpet down. We shall see. All right, so we're to one of the final steps of our prep. I'm wiping it down with some acetone and then going back over at the instructions specifically say simple green. So that's what I'm doing now. Just trying to, I think the goal is to degrease the entire floor. And I'm pretty alarmed at like how dirty the towel came back the first couple times. It's still coming back now, actually. I'm still finding some pieces like well, there's some carpet that's left. I'm gonna scrub, scrape, scrub, scrape over and over again. But I just want this to be done right. Now we've got everything cleaned up, degreased, shot back again. We're gonna start masking some areas off, and I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. Sorry I didn't capture how we got to where we are, but I opened both of these. Kind of hard getting these uh, white pieces off the top. I had to use some channel locks to get those off. And then use my little five and one tool to open the can and then put some little holes around the edges. I put about half of each can in here and then the cans are only halfway full. They're made to where you can mix them together uh, in one can, I guess. But I put them in this other can that I cleaned out just so I can uh, kind of ration. So I don't know if this is gonna take the whole amount or just a little bit. So we're gonna mix this up. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to get with the roller, but hopefully I can get mostly to my mast area with the roller. This stuff is going on super thin. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm just coming out with a brush in some of these places, but I don't want to put it on too thick. It is a little frothy. So I don't know if that's good or bad. We'll find out soon though, unfortunately. Instead of mix until it looks like milk. That uh it looks like milk. Okay, so we may have a slight issue here. I poured a little bit of each in here, mixed them together. I primed the floor like it says. It looks a little sudsy, not really like a smooth coat. I don't know if that's good or not. I may have mixed it too much. I don't know. I don't know. But I've got a lot left. Like a lot left. So I'm going to try to put it in this can, see if I can save it. Maybe I need to put another coat of, coat of primer. You're not supposed to put anything on it for 24 hours. So we're getting started on our final, um, I don't know, final like main step. I'm supposed to do three coats of this, but it specifically says you're supposed to use a mixer and you see like it is really starting to, uh, I've been mixing it for a second now. I couldn't make it more than about halfway through the can, I'm, like pushing down, just chunks of rubber in there and you can see the grit in there and then I'm pulling it up. You see it really close. Look at that. So I'm gonna mix it up some more. I'm gonna try to mix it as thoroughly as possible. I wanna make sure that I have the rubber very evenly distributed and hope that there's no spots on the floor that are slippery. So before I start putting this down, you notice the frothiness, like the bubbles are gone. It has a really weird kind of, I don't wanna to touch it too much. I don't want oils for my hands on it, but um, you see there's kind of a sheen to it. It is like an epoxy coating. So it's almost like garage floor paint. The garage floor paint, you have two steps. You put like a coating down and then you put the actual paint down. But we are about to get started on this. So I've done a little bit of this. My initial observation is that the first coat is going on very thin. I'm okay with this though. The instructions say to put three coats on high traffic areas and this is as high traffic as it's gonna get. So just like when you're painting inside a house or something, I have, you know, little confidence in the first coat looking good but anywhere I have to use a uh, brush looks pretty terrible so I've got to figure that part out I've got some, some pooling right there where I try to put it on pretty thick around those edges so I've got to go back and try to smooth that out but also keep it textured it's kind of weird just an update looking at the directions here it specifically says two coats make the roller go roller go over each pass maybe four to five times um, so I did notice on here that it says it's helpful to run the roller 
over the surface very lightly to ensure even distribution of color and rubber. But also up here, uh, in order to avoid cracking, do not try to achieve desired thickness of one coat. So this is where we are after one coat. I think it looks okay for coat number one. I definitely have some areas like right there where there's more rubber there than maybe another spot. But it says I can apply another coat as soon as this feels dry. This area over here, by the way, sucks. Like up underneath the console, <clears throat> um, you kind of get to an area where you're kind of backed into a corner. So I started in here and then worked my way over and then into that floor in that corner. But by the time I got in here, whew, I was like just kind of stuck. I was sitting on the back of this seat and trying to accurately, <coughs> excuse me, accurately roll. And you see there's some inconsistencies there that will need to be cleared up with the second coat. But I did notice um, also, it's definitely still wet, but I mean, the brush and roller, I felt like we're starting to dry. I, I went ahead and you know, washed them out. Sometimes I will put stuff like that in the refrigerator in a bag. But I didn't want to take a chance because the directions also say to specifically use, let's see, where is it here? The tough coat roller, basically like only use that roller. And if you mess yours up or don't have one, here it is, a roller application. So uh, other rollers not developed to pick up and spread the tough coat evenly. So that roller was like 10 bucks. I guess we'll see if it's worth it per the directions. It's very important. All right, so to mix and put that coat down, it took me about 40 minutes. I'm calling that my lunch break for the day. I came back out here, just got off a meeting and it's been about an hour, hour and a half and it's still very wet. So gonna keep holding off. I'll let you know how long this takes. All right, all right, here is our second coat update. So I didn't video putting the second coat on. I uh, mixed it. You see the stuff on the floor there, it's just the way I wanted it. I actually don't care about this floor very much. I'm kind of just going for like a modern art where I'll just have splatters of whatever I happen to do on it. Continuing on, we still have quite a bit of paint left. I'll show you that in a moment, but you can see where I've been purposely coating it on underneath the console. It's a little more rough there, which is it was what I want. Um, so you see some still a few spots poking through after just coat number two over there. Coat number two I did put it on a little thicker, but I do know I'm going to put on a third coat. So I wasn't like going crazy with it. Also, it says to make sure that you don't put it on too thick where it can crack. Looking from this angle, I'll see a little bit over there on the white part. I may need to go back and touch up. But let me show you what it looks like where the fiberglass is white. Boom. So there we go. This is where it was just regular old white fiberglass and not the grayish color that was in the main floor area. Um, this looks really good. We'll see what it looks like when it dries as far as missing spots. Because it is a light gray over white, depending on which angle at it I look, I kind of see some spots that maybe need some touch up. But I think this area is done. It's a low traffic area. It's just a storage box. I mean, one good thing about this is I think that I can go back and add and touch up later. I'll have to do some research on that. But it feels like it went over that first coat so well that, you know, if, if there's a chip right there, I could go back and just put some more on there. Um, there are some weird spots like right there in the corner. So if I can get a little closer, I'll show you. Where it's like there's almost like some bubbleage going on there. I don't know, we'll see how it dries. You know, third coat should finish this off and make it look really good. You know, I'm, I'm very impressed with the way that it covered, you know, and uh, I don't know if this will be multiple videos or just one long one, but I talked about that ledge around the edges where the fiberglass changed. You can still see it there, but you can't see the screw heads. You can't see as much of a lip. It is very thick stuff. It's so like you can see here, there's definitely a lip there, but it filled in the gap. You can't see screw heads. I mean, this is what it looks like. It's almost more like a, like a paste of sorts. And you can see the rubber flux in there. When I sprayed this out, sprayed the brushes and the, uh, the brush and the roller out yesterday, I can see the white flux of rubber still in the driveway. It's probably not great, but I don't really have a better place to do it. I wouldn't want it to go down my drain either. 
Um, but you can see the roller there. I'm gonna try to save some of it off the roller. But check this out. This is our can. So my boat is a single console, obviously as you see. A lot of floor space. And I still have over half left. I think to do the front and back deck, I would need to buy. Sorry. I think I would need to buy another gallon. I still have tons of primary left though. So I think I could do with just this. Don't know how much life this roller has on it. May need to get another one of those. But just another gallon of the paint stuff and I may be able to do another area. Kind of annoying as I'm talking to you, I realize it's a pretty big miss spot right there. But I don't know how I didn't see that earlier. But that's what the third coat will be mainly to kind of you see some bleed through from that dark color and then to hit those kind of spots i'll stop talking now bye so here we are this is coat three and don't you see my ugly feet there so move them out of the way but it looks pretty good and i know what's gonna happen is i'll pull it out in the sun and really good light i'll see some things are messed but considering what it looked like before I think I'll take it. So now that you've watched that and seen how, it, how the install was and everything, I'm gonna go through a few pros and cons with you. Overall, big pro. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you a few particular things I like. What you wanna call it a con? My son says this is hard on his feet. It is pretty rough, I'll give you that. Um, I mean, it's it's got rubberized stuff in it, but you can see it's, Got a lot of texture to it. So the gripness, maybe a trade-off is it may not be the easiest on your feet. I did notice it did not get hot when I yesterday. Um, I left this here. This went over my masking. I'll show you, like, with my fingernails, like, I cannot scrape it off. So, a pro and a con. Pro is that this stuff probably is going to be here for a long time. Con is if you go over your masking, that's going to happen. So first thing I like is that I took the boat out and I've washed it. And if you ever have a boat with carpet, and by the way, that carpet's gonna be gone soon. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go carpet, and I'll get to that in a second, or if I'm gonna go with uh, this tough deck stuff. But you can see, this is pretty rough. Um, but, so it gives you good grip. First of all, it's a good pro, is it does not slide very easy. Um, I'm rubbing on it really hard. You can see my fingers turning colors, and it's not hurt my fingers at all. Um, washing the boat. Obviously not a huge deal. If you were to get rained on, not a big deal. Particularly underneath there. If you have a boat with carpet in it, you know that takes forever to dry. And I usually set up a fan, maybe even a dehumidifier. Don't have to do that with this stuff. So number one, it's really, really grippy. It feels really tough. Number two, there's nothing to stay wet forever. And the third thing that I really like about it is how easy it is to clean. So. I got in and out of the boat on the driveway out there and it you can't tell there's a few pieces of dirt there but I can just vacuum those up really easily and overall stay pretty clean. In the end though thank you guys for watching and going through this process. I would do it again you know I, I haven't had it out just once now but you know assuming it holds up maybe I do an update video a year from now and we'll see how it's going. But overall, the process was not bad. I got about $100 in it, and I may have enough to do, like I said, the back deck back there, as well as the front deck. I may have to get another gallon of the paint. But the biggest cost in this, uh, the paint was not cheap, but the primer and everything together is about 100 bucks. So definitely worth it. Uh, if you're looking for a carpet alternative and don't really feel confident like I did with doing C deck, I just realized I cut it wrong and it wouldn't look good where the uh, hooks would get caught in any rock. I showed earlier, you know, the amount of dog fur. Uh, I do have dog have claws, so it may be fine. Some of you may have seen that. Tell me how that works. I may go with that on my deck still if I work up the courage to start cutting it. But otherwise, this stuff is it seems to be legit and a, a good low cost alternative. Thanks for watching.